Oh, well, good morning again. Back up here a little sooner than I anticipated. <laughs> I guess it's a good example of when you serve God, you need to be prepared to do what He asks you to do at a given notice or at a given moment. So here I am. Uh, unfortunately, Glenn is not feeding you well or can't talk, correct? Where'd she go? She must that be way somewhere. Teacher. What's that? That way somewhere. Teacher. She must be a teacher. Okay. We have three teachers and four students. That ought to be good one on one. <laughs> so this morning, I had to do some real quick scrounging up to come up with something to discuss with you this morning. So I went back in my annals of messages that I've done, and so there may be four or five people here who, are, who have ever heard this message before, but with the turnover of people within the church, which is a normal proposition, why most of you haven't heard this before, so it's good for us to know these things. So this morning we're going to look at what is a covenant. Every one of us here has made a covenant. Uh, there is three different kinds of covenants that exist. Uh, but a covenant can include treaties, alliances, agreements, contracts, pledges, promises, or commitment. So a covenant has many meanings many things and many aspects in our lives. Uh, the first kind of covenant is called parity covenant. And that's the type of covenant or agreement that we live in today in our world. An example of that would be your credit cards. It's a kind of a deceptive type of covenant. It's a it's agreement between two parties, but it only one party really is active within that agreement. You use your credit card, you sign the ticket, and you pay the bill. There's no, there is no interaction until you don't pay the bill that you have with, with the person you have the contract with. The second one is fairly similar. It could be an automobile loan. Uh, at least at that point in time, you're sitting down across the desk from the, the car salesman and you have a, uh, a, uh, a relationship, I guess is what I would say, of the person you're signing the contract or making a commitment to pay for this automobile. So it's a little more one-on-one -on -one type of a thing. A bigger type of agreement is the mortgage, is when you go through and go get a loan for your, for your home. Uh, and one of the things that is, that is so sadly overlooked is a marriage contract. Mm -hmm. That is a covenant. You covenant with this person and you give vows of what you plan on doing or obligating within your life for the other person. Uh, unfortunately, that's one of the most broken covenant that we have today. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. People hate to lose their home or their car, but even with their spouse, it would be a deal. At least that's what it appears. You know, fortunately, we're going on 53 years of marriage. I've never experienced that. And, and, and I do feel sorry for people who do have that experience in their lives, because I do know it's not a good one. Uh, it's heartbreaking, it's very bad, and it's destructive to so many people. And I, just, I just pray for those people who, who have that experience. So then, there are two other types of covenants that we have. And two of those uh, I want to take a look at are, they are committed to un- uh, or no requirements on the person that these covenants that we're going to talk about come from God. They're biblical covenants and they are ones that are conditional. He says, if you do this, I'll do that. Or the other type of covenant we have in the Bible is an unconditional. 
Our salvation is an unconditional covenant. He just gives it to us. So I'd like to take a look at some of the different covenants that are referred to in the Bible. And the first one I'd like to look at is, is called, uh, is it with Isaac covenant? And it's a covenant between him and Abimelech. And I'm sure you've heard that name Abimelech before. Uh, so many people think Abimelech is the name of an individual, but it is not. It's, it's a name, it's Abimelech, it's actually how it should be pronounced. It's father, uh, leader, or master. So, or you could call it Father God, King, or Father, yeah, Father King. So it's the leader of whatever, wherever the location you're at, that would be the, the leader of that country. So turn with me to Genesis 26. go to verses starting in verse 26 it says meanwhile so what's what's happened here is Isaac there was a famine in the land and he was headed south toward Egypt to go to to go get grain and feed his family and flocks and God spoke to him and says do not go to Egypt, I'll show you where to go. So we go to a place called Gerar, and there he experiences Abimelech, which is the leader of, at, at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And they get into a relationship, and he likes Isaac, and so he lets him establish a place, lets him feed his flocks there, and blesses him very well. And he has flocks and goats, and he gives, and he, and he has such an increase that Abimelech becomes fearful of him because he's coming so powerful and wealthy. So they have their parting of their ways. So, so Isaac says, "Okay, well, if you don't want me here, I'll leave." So he he heads back to the to the Holy Land, and so he's gone now from there. And then in verse 26, it says, Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar with Ashaha, his personal advisor, and Fikol, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked him, Why do you have why have you come to me since you were hostile to me and sent me away? They answered, we saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said, there ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between you, between us and you. Let us do us no harm, just as we did not molest you, uh, but always treated you well and sent you away in peace. And you have blessed by the Lord. Isaac then made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning, the men swore an oath to each other that Isaac sent them on their way, and they left him in peace. So they created a covenant that they would not be uh, hostile toward each other. And notice that they sat down and ate. That seemed to be... The sign of sealing a covenant is they sit down and share a meal with each other. Uh, I don't know of any time in the, the Bible where enemies sit down and eat together. So it's a kind of a sign of, okay, we're friends. Let's get together and have a meal together. Another sample of a covenant is David with Jonathan. Uh, turn to First Samuel. Mm -hmm. 
and in 1 Samuel chapter 20, starting in verse 16. So what's going on here is David is having some, well, let me rephrase that. Saul is having some issues with David. Saul thinks that David is a he, he realizes that David has been chosen by God to be the next king. He's afraid that David is going to get a little yancy and want the kingdom and he's in his possession sooner than, than Saul's uh, death. So he thinks he's paranoid about David and his kingdom. And David, on the other hand, is perfectly happy with waiting. He knows that he's going to be king and he's perfectly happy to wait till Saul passes away and he can fill his rightful role. So he's kind of wondering, so he's having this conversation with Jonathan. And Jonathan is the king's son. So he's, so David here has an in with the inner workings of the kingdom. So he kind of has an inside man type of thing. So in that, David is sharing with Jonathan and he thinks that his father Saul is out to get him. Jonathan is trying to reassure him that, that no, you are safe. Saul is not trying to do that. So they set up between the two of them, they set up this agreement that <coughs> They're having a, some kind of a feast meal that everybody comes to the, to the camp and, and has a meal with the king. But David is afraid to go there, afraid he'll be trapped and captured and, and that type of thing. So they set this up, this agreement that Jonathan will ask the Saul several questions. And if, he, he's, if he's happy with the excuse why David is there, then that means that Saul is not out to get him. If he gets mad and upset because David doesn't show up for the feast, then they know that he is, in fact, actually out to get David. So they set this up, and so in 16, 1 Samuel 20, 16, it says, So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him because he loved him as he loved himself. So they create this covenant or agreement with each other. And so Jonathan goes to the meal. He finds out that uh, Saul does, in fact, mean to do David harm. So they go through the process of, of Jonathan warning David of that fact. And, and uh, you know, then they go in through the story of Saul chasing after David and him running around in the wilderness for many years. So anyway, but the point there is that they made a covenant with each other to, for, to do that very thing. So now let's look at uh, a couple of conditional covenants. There's one was with Adam in the Garden of Eden, back to Genesis 2. chapter 2 starting verse 15 as the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work work it and take care of it and the Lord God commanded the man you are free to eat from the any tree in the garden but you must not eat from the tree of the good the good knowledge of good and evil for when you eat of it, 
you shall surely die. So there's a conditional covenant or type of agreement. I'll take care of you. You can live here in this garden and you can uh, have a good secure life as long as you don't eat from this one particular tree. Well, we're standing here knowing what actually happened. Adam didn't do so well. So here we have the knowledge of good and evil in our lives, unfortunately. Another example of a conditional uh, covenant is in Jeremiah. Sorry all these books are so far apart. I didn't write it, so. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 11. came from Jeremiah, from the Lord. Listen to the terms of this covenant and tell them, that's the Jewish people, tell them to the people of Judah and to those who live in Jerusalem, tell them that this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Cursed is, is the man who does not obey the terms of this covenant. The terms I command your forefathers when I brought them out of Egypt, but of the iron smelting furnace. I said, obey me and do everything I command you, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. Then I will, f then I will fulfill the oath I swore to your fathers, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, the land you, I promised you. So there is a conditional covenant. He will give them the land that he promised the forefathers if they keep his commandments. Uh, and historically, like all of mankind, sometimes they did well and sometimes they didn't do so well. Uh, so, so goes the right end of the whole book, the story about them doing well or not doing so well. So there's a couple of examples of conditional covenant. So let's take a moment to look at an unconditional covenant. First one is it with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. Genesis 12, beginning in verse 1. It says, The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make you a great name, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and, I, and whose... Whoever curses you, I will curse, and all of the people of the earth will be blessed through you. So there is an unconditional uh, covenant. That God says he's going to do these things for Abram, or later on, Abraham. Uh, so that's one. Another one is... Uh, if you take a look, is that God's blessing upon Israel and further on all of mankind through, uh, look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. We 
beginning in verse 5. It says, This is what the God, the God, the Lord says. He who creates, created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that covers comes out of it, who gives breath to its peoples and life to those who walk in it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to be eyes that are blind, to the free, free captive from prison, and to release from the dungeons those who sit in darkness. So one of that is kind of the short version or calculation of that is he's going to bring a blessing upon Israel through Abraham and through that process to all of the world or to also to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. So that is again his covenant with them that he will do that and he will do it through grace that we have. Uh, so those are a parody covenant, conditional, you do this, I will do that, and unconditional, God just does, bestows upon us, all we have to do is receive it. So a covenant is a sovereign pronouncement of God by which he establishes a relationship of responsibility between himself and an individual. So that's basically what, what the covenant does for people. A, an example of that, of a covenant between himself and an individual. And look in, is, would be example of that again is Abraham. Uh, turn to Genesis 1 again. Genesis 12, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so we've read that. We know what that is, that God says to Abraham what he's going to do. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make you your name great, and you will be blessed. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. So those are a covenant from God to an individual. Another, go turn over to verse, you know, chapter 13. In verse <coughs> 14. Again, the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, Lift up your eyes from where you are and look, and look north, south, east, and west. All the land that you see, I give you, I give to you and your offspring forever. He is giving them that, that land forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone would, and anyone could count the dust then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land where I am giving it to you. So there's another or more examples of uh, a covenant between God and an individual. So let's now take a look at an example of between God and a specific family. We'll take a look in Genesis chapter 6 with Noah. Uh, verses, uh, chapter 6, verses 
verses 9 and 10. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. Isn't that amazing? Of all the people on the earth, you can only find one righteous man. I wouldn't want to have been Noah. His, his neighborhood wouldn't have been a good place to live, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Noah was a righteous man, blessed among the people of his time. And he walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then skip down to verse 18. <clears throat> But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your <laughs> wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. <laughs> it's interesting why they throw the word alive in there. Wouldn't do much good if they weren't. <laughs> Uh, two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept <coughs> alive. You notice it wasn't necessary to name off the fish? I think they're going to make it. So anyway, that's one example of a covenant between God and a family group. Noah, his wife, and his, and his uh, family. Another one is with King David. Uh, turn to Second Samuel. <clears throat> Chapter 7. Chapter 7, starting in the middle of verse 11. It's in here somewhere. Kind of hard to find the middle of a verse, isn't it? It says, The Lord declares that you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, this is what King David now, I will raise you up your offspring to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name and I will establish a throne for his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of men, with floggings inflicted by men. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul. So, who I loved from before you, your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. This kind of points out kind of the things that my wife had a, and I had a discussion as we were studying and looking through all the different passages we went through. Uh, especially the one in Isaiah. You kind of have to go through and look at the passages and try to interpret when they're talking about the individual that they're talking about, similar to this, talking about David and his family, or whether they're talking about Christ and, and his reign as he goes through life. So, so this is talking about King David and his family getting an earthly kingdom and living there on theirs. But it's also talking about, in through that, Jesus is in the line of David, and so God is going to create his kingdom, and that will last forever. 
So then let's take a look, a look at God having a covenant between a nation <coughs> or a race of people. Uh, in Genesis 17, Genesis 17, 19, and 20. This is God making a covenant with the people group. It says, Then God said, this is talking about Ishmael, his, uh, the son that he had with his handmaiden. It says, Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my kingdom with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of 12 rulers and I will make him into a great nation. So, here Ishmael is the descendant of Abraham, and he, through his process, becomes part of the Gentile world, uh, I guess is the way to put it. Isaac was blessed, became the Israelites, and became God's favorite people on the earth. So they became a blessed people by God. So... There, that is the origination of the Arab populations of today. They do acknowledge that they're cousins. They don't like each other. <laughs> As you can tell by, by the shootings and killings and all that that goes on. And then, of course, with the covenant with Jacob, by my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. When he has finished speaking to Abraham, he went on up from him. And we've seen what the, the blessings that he did for uh, Jacob and for us through that. Uh, so I want to take one quick look at the establishment between God and all of mankind. In, in with, again, with Adam says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on, on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the earth, uh, of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit in it. They will be yours for food, and you will, you, and to all the beasts of the earth, and to all of the birds of the air, and all the creatures that move on the ground. Everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green tree plant, and it was so. So there's a covenant. <laughs> between all of general, all of mankind. So then again, in it, with Noah, he, you know, we went through the flood and he survived the flood. And so that was a covenant that he made with Noah and his family that affected all of mankind. So those are the different types of covenants that there are. Uh, just briefly, there's the Edamic covenant that God made in the Garden of Eden with mankind. There's the Adamic covenant, the covenant that God made to Adam and uh, what he wanted, did with him. The Noahic covenant, the, the rules and all the specifics of, of what God did for Noah. There's the Abrahamic covenant of what Oh, God did for Abraham 
and for all of mankind of the different things that he did. The Mosaic Covenant, which comes in Exodus, that gives us the Ten Commandments, the judgments and all the ordinance and the laws and rules that God gave to mankind. There's the Land Covenant that God gave, uh, the Davidic Covenant that he gave to David, mm -hmm. and through him, through for us that we have salvation. And the last one then is the New Covenant that Jesus talked about. So I knew I would not get through all of this mm -hmm. far too much. So anyway, that's an introduction to covenants and what they are, how they affect our lives. And uh, so with that, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for loving us. And we thank you for your commitments that you've given to us. And we just do ask that you would help us to do our part in the <coughs> with you, Lord that we can be uh, honor you, we can be sin free, that we can live a life that's pleasing to you, Lord. And we just need your help in that. We just ask that you would do that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.